for no, 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 love, no, no, love for no. Turn up and get the best man in. Don't let the wrong man win. It's up to you. Speak out. It's time to raise your voice. It's time to make your choice. Be sure you do. This nation is for all the people and not a privileged few. This government is of the people and by the people like you. Turn up. Let every voice be heard. Give meaning to the word. Democracy, oh say can't you see that your vote keeps you free, so turn up, well, everybody out. Oh, the citizens of the USA are an independent lot. They turn out on election day and quietly have the final say whether anyone likes it or not. So let the world see how men act when they're free. Turn out, vote, everybody out. On this election day, I, Joseph Welch, a citizen of the United States, did go to the polls and cast my vote against John Doakes. But this was just the final step, the last of a long series of important events that may have escaped your notice. I wish you'd been there while all this was going on, my friend. By the way, where were you? In the 4th District, it's a close race between Doakes and Smith. The latest count, Smith, 1,854. Dokes, 1,965. Charlie, Dokes leads this is such a Smith bore. Can't we have something else? 2,242 okay. to... Oh! We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. In the race between Smith and Dokes, all but a few precincts are in, and Dokes continues to maintain his lead. Here is an important announcement. Mr. Smith has just conceded the election. We will take you now to party headquarters, where a Dokes victory celebration should be underway. And party workers, I thank you. <laughs> and I solemnly promise to the voters who elected me that I will consider my office a sacred trust. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. What is your opinion of the election of John Dokes? Dokes? Did he really win the election? I didn't think he even had a chance. And you, sir? What difference does it make? I'm just on the outside looking in. So. I didn't even bother to vote. Why should I? There was hardly any choice. I think it's dirty politics. That's what it is. Personally, I think Anderson is the best man for the job, but he wasn't even on the ticket. Strange and interesting. If so many citizens didn't want Mr. Dokes, how did he come to be elected? Let's look back and see how it happened. John Dokes' career as a candidate began here at party headquarters, eight months before his election. On a cold, windy night in March, the leaders of his party gathered for a caucus. Well, in conclusion, it looks as if the best party slogan we've come up with is the best man for better government. Yeah, right. Everybody go along with that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now let's get down to picking a candidate. 
And I just want to remind you of one. The whole idea of an election is to win it. Let's keep that in mind when we decide who to run. Well, I've been thinking about Phil Adams. Now, we all know Phil. The caucus is sometimes called America's most extraordinary and most neglected political institution. Here is where the party leaders pick their candidates and plan their campaign strategy. In some states, the caucus is closely regulated by law. In other states, it is not so well regulated especially at the precinct level. In some places, the very terms caucus and precinct are not even used. But the process is essentially the same. Most citizens are not even aware that these caucuses are being held. And yet, politically, they are of the greatest importance. There seems to be some kind of objection to every man we've talked about so far. What we need is a new face. Well, let's take another look at this fellow, Dokes. Now, he's not too well known yet, of course, but he does make a good impression. And he's the only one nobody's really opposed to. Nobody's mad at him. I don't know. He sure wants it. Well, what do we really know about him? We need someone who will work with the party. Don't worry about it. I'll have a talk with him. Well, what'll I tell Phil Adams? He's not gonna like this. Well, we can't help that. And it's for the good of the party. Tell Phil there'll be some other spot for him after the election. But now, let's finish this thing up right. I'd like a formal nomination from the floor. Well, okay, if you're sure it'll work out right. Sure, I'm sure. <clears throat> I hereby nominate that distinguished citizen Loyal party member, your friend and mine, John C. Dokes. Second. All those in favor, raise their right hand. You may be interested to know that under the laws of the state in which this caucus was held, any member of a political party is entitled to attend the caucus of his party. Item two. Before it was held, the time and place of this caucus was duly printed in the newspaper. True, it was a small item, and it is quite possible that if some uninvited member of the party had decided to attend the caucus, he might not have received a very warm welcome. Nevertheless, the fact remains that many could have attended, but only those interested did so. We can only assume that the others did not care enough about their government to find out what the laws and procedures were regarding this important political event. They were not even interested enough to know their own rights, much less assert them. They forfeited a valuable privilege. So we may say that the first step in Mr. Doak's political career was made possible by the political ignorance of the voters. And if there are any who do not care to plead ignorance, I can only say to them, then, where were you? come to order. I want to begin by thanking all you folks for coming here and volunteering to work for our candidate. The primaries are coming up and I don't have to tell you that a primary isn't won by accident. If we want John Dokes in the fall, we'd better pitch in now and win this primary. For a majority party, control of the primary in any community means control of the political situation in that community. I want to impress on you that every single vote we can get is important. Here's why. 
Out of every 100 possible voters in a precinct, only about 50% will turn out for the general election next fall. About 25 of these voters will back the majority party. 15 will back the minority party. And the remaining 10 will scatter their votes as unenrolled voters in either party. So, we have a situation where what we call the will of the people is actually the will of only 25% of the people. And in many primaries, only about one quarter of that 25% will turn out to vote. This comes to six or seven people. So, for your candidate to win the primary in a majority party, all he has to do is get a majority of this six or seven people out of a hundred. <laughs> the outcome of the primary actually hangs on how four people out of seven in every hundred can be persuaded to vote. Now, here's how we'll organize the work. Eddie, darling, would you please close the window? Yeah. Oh, I'll be so glad when these elections are over. This is a new thing. Say that again. These politicians create more of a rumpus than a dog fight. Gee, it's sort of like a circus, isn't it, Dad? <laughs> That's exactly what politics is, Eddie, a circus. <laughs> Gee, it must be sort of fun. Say, why don't you run for office? Bet you'd make a swell congressman or governor or something. I thank you very much, Eddie, but I'm too busy. Anyway, I'm not the type. Yeah. People like your father. Don't want to get mixed up in politics, dear. Oh. Hmm. Say, Dad, wasn't Lincoln a politician? Well, he was really more of a, uh, a statesman. What's the difference between a politician and a statesman? Well, that would take a, a lot of explaining. Oh, Jane, at what time are we supposed to be over at the Davises? 8.30, dear. Oh? Oh, look, Eddie, uh, we'll get to it this weekend. It's getting pretty late now. Oh. Say, uh, you better clean up your homework, huh? Okay, sure. Coming, Jane? While the do-nothings were avoiding politics, the precinct workers of Doak's party were as busy as ants among the grassroots where the votes lay hidden. Hello, Mr. Allen? Yes. That's David Allen, is that right? Yes. I'm making a survey of all the voters in this district, and I wondered if you'd mind telling me what party you belong to. Well, I don't generally vote a straight ticket for any party. I see. You vote for the man that you think is the best man, is that yes, it? Yes, that's right, exactly. Oh, well, good. Maybe you'll vote for John Doakes. Doakes? Who is he? Now that you ask me. You see, if you don't register, you won't be able to vote in the primaries, Mrs. Brown. Well, where do I register? And when? All the information is right here on this card. Why don't you keep it and mark the date down on your calendar? Good afternoon. Mr. Brooks, I wonder if you got some literature in the mail about our candidate, Mr. Doakes. Yes, I did, and I threw it in the basket. Good day, sir. Politics is people. It is the newly married couple down the street, 
and the widow who lives alone around the corner, and the handicapped person in a wheelchair. It is the older citizen who has voted his way through 60 elections, and the young man who has just come of voting age. It is people who have lived in your neighborhood for 20 years and newcomers who don't know anybody yet but the tradespeople they buy from. It is angry people and disappointed people and cheerful people and timid people and courageous people all mixed in together, all sharing a wonderful thing called freedom. Politics is the sound made by the voices of the people coming from a hundred million throats talking it over, trying to make up their minds, getting ready to decide who their leader shall be. And the problem facing the political worker is always the same. How can I persuade these people? Among those who had to be persuaded to vote for Dokes were the women in his community. The women's vote was very important. According to Census Bureau statistics on the 1960 presidential election, Women eligible to vote now outnumber the men by more than 3,200,000. Doak's campaign managers made a special effort to capture these voters. Mr. Doak's had to pass close inspection at many a coffee clutch. And my little Frankie, who just idolizes Mr. Doak's here. <laughs> well, he woke up this morning, and what do you think the first thing he said to me was? He said, Mommy, can I run for mayor? <laughs> well, I always say there's nothing like children around the house to keep our ideas young. Oh, oh true, Mr. Dokes. Yeah, I'm, and speaking about children, I'm afraid I really must be going. Oh. I'm terribly sorry for this interruption, ladies. Uh, may I speak to you a moment, Mr. Dokes? Yes, oh, you ladies will excuse me. Why, yeah. You know how it is. Oh, yeah. I'm really sorry I had to do this to you, Mr. Dokes. That's all right, my boy. I just want to remind you, you have to be over at Mrs. Pentland's at 3.30. Mrs. Pentland's? They told me I was doing a Miss Natalie Rossens at 3.30. But you can't. There are 20 women waiting for you over at Mrs. Pentland's. What am I going to do? Ah, uh, all the little problems that go on behind the scenes in a political campaign. But somehow this is what binds political workers together. Gives them somewhat the same feeling that veterans have when they've been through a war together. Even the mistakes become something to reminisce about and laugh over later on. I think this is true whenever people work together or fight together for a common cause. And it makes the political worker feel somehow special, even when he is doing something as dull as ringing doorbells or stuffing envelopes. I think the critical outsider who holds himself aloof from it all misses a rewarding experience by not participating in politics. <laughs> it has been said that the power to nominate is as important as the power to elect. The purpose of the primaries is to give citizens a voice in the nomination of candidates. In 60% of all the congressional districts in the United States, 60% to win the primary of the dominant party is identical with winning the election. And yet the voters in Mr. Doak's community let his name get on the ballot unopposed. Although they could have seized the opportunity afforded them by law in political party procedures and put others in the primary race. Why did no one come forward and contest Mr. Doak's claim to the nomination? Why did no group organize and propose a candidate of its own? The answer was a yawn, the terrible yawn of apathy. As predicted on the day of the primary, only a handful of people turned out to vote. The machinery of government was running, but a minority of the citizens was in control. In addition to apathy, there was ignorance, even at this late date. Very good. I believe that Mrs. Simpson can go in. Yes. Your name, please? Edgar Jones. Jones. Edgar. J-O-N-E-S. Mm. Page 162. Alan, Bruce, Edward. Edgar? Edgar M. 
I don't find your name here, Mr. Jones. Well, why don't you? Did you register? Well, of course I registered. Four years ago, the last time I voted. I'm sorry, sir. That registration no longer holds good. You Too bad. He deserves an E for effort, but he really didn't care enough about his vote to protect it. Different states have different laws about their political machinery. It pays to know what those laws are in your own state. As you can see, Mr. Dokes wins hands down by default. Whether you think he's the right man for the job or not, he is now the party's official candidate. His name will appear on the ballot in the general election. You don't like it? That's a shame. While there was still time to do something about it, where were you? I just want to say, first of all, that you people did a fine job on the primaries. A great job! <laughs> now we've got an election coming up. And we're going to win that election. Yeah. We're going to put the pressure on and keep it on. It's going to take hard work and plenty of it. Now, is there anybody here who feels that he hasn't got the time? Anybody here who doesn't think he'll be able to do the work? All right. I am counting on you people. The party is counting on you. Now, here's what I want the committees to do. And so, once again, the political machinery begins to move shifting swiftly into high gear. Will Dokes win the election? Dokes' party is taking no chances. keeps talking about my lack of experience in politics. Let's examine some of his experience. Who sold out on the housing issue? Who voted no on the new school? If that's the kind of experience a politician needs, I'm glad I don't have any. This applause has been technically augmented. It is election morning, and for the political worker, this is the big day. He prepares himself for it like a farmer going forth to harvest, or a cowboy driving his herd of cattle the last mile to the railhead. His job is to get those voters to the poll. Name by name, he goes down his list, rounding everyone up, helping them to get to the polls in every way he can. Even with all this pressure, the turnout is only average. However, the voter who has had no voice in nominating a candidate, either at the caucus or at the primary, is only 50% effective by this time. If he doesn't like dopes, his only alternative is to vote a split ticket. But here he may find himself confronted by some other candidate whom he likes no better than dopes and knows even less about. Well, what's it to be? Make up your mind, Mr. Voter. 
Now in the privacy of the curtain booth, he may momentarily regret his apathy and negligence. But time has run out on him. Well, he thinks, what's the difference how I vote after all? One vote? Who cares? It'll be lost in the shuffle. Nobody need ever know how I voted. The ballot is secret, isn't it? Dokes or Smith, he tosses a coin mentally. He votes for Dokes. And so the mystery of how Mr. Dokes came to be elected turns out to be no mystery at all. In a democracy, government is truly representative of all the people only if all the people participate in government. This means participation in the party of your choice because government is the product of politics. This is democracy. This is the meaning of freedom. Turn out and get the best man in Don't let the wrong man win It's up to you Speak out It's time to raise your voice It's time to make your choice Be sure you do This nation is for all the people And not a privileged few This government is of the people and by the people like you. Turn out, let every voice be heard, give meaning to the word democracy. Oh, say, can't you see that your vote keeps you free? So turn up, vote, everybody out.